five to ten minutes summary and recap what we learned from last week. Okay, I always insist this. Always do recap so that you're still fresh on what we have learned. Okay, last week we started with a new group which is called group one. Okay, we have three groups in total 18, 1, and 17. We have covered group 18. Huh? So last week we started on group one. Okay, first and foremost, you all must know group one also known as alkali metal. Today you will understand why we call alkali metal. We not call for fun, huh? There is a reason. Today we will learn that. Okay. First of all, when you come to group one, you must know the members. Okay. So, uh, always focus on the first three members in the group. Okay. Focus on first three members of the group. If you are here last week, don't copy anything. Just a re just a recap, huh? Okay. So this is the first three member. This is their name. They are lithium, they are sodium, and they are potassium, okay, respectively. And these are their symbol. Lithium, the symbol is Li, sodium, the symbol is Na, potassium, the symbol is K, huh? and this is their correspond electron arrangement, okay, what we call electron configuration. Huh? So lithium is 2.1, sodium add one more circles, 281, potassium one more circle, 281. Make sense? All of them have one outer electron, that's what put them in one. Okay? So first and foremost, you must recall back what are their appearance. What are their appearance? How they look like? Huh? So all the alkali metal, huh? all alkali metals, they are some shiny and grey colour solids okay all alkali metal they are shiny grey colour solid next thing we know alkali metal are metal so we can learn something regarding their physical properties alkali metal they are metal so they have some behaviour quite aligned quite similar as metal for example everyone know metal is good conductor okay we all know Metal used to be a very good conductor of heat and electricity. Okay? So, metal can conduct heat and electricity very well. Alkali metal is a metal, of course, you can do that. Okay? Right? But do remember, alkali metal also has some behavior which make them very weird. Okay? Alkali metal also has some properties. Alkali metals, they also have some of the properties which is different which is different from your normal or so-called regular metals okay example everyone should know alkali metal is very very soft okay alkali metals okay alkali metal is very very soft how soft they are, they can cut by knife. Huh? Because not many metal can cut by knife. Okay? Most of the metal was pretty hard. But alkali metal, they are some weird metal. Okay? So they don't follow regular rules. Huh? Second thing, normally the metal sink. Okay? They have higher density than water. But not for alkali metal. Alkali metal <coughs> has a lower density than water. Alkali metal less dense than water. Okay, so if you put the alkali metal in water, they somehow they float. Okay, next one, normally the metal has pretty high melting point. Okay, alkali metal the melting point was quite low among the metals. Okay, alkali metal has pretty low melting point. Huh? Alkali metal, you have low melting point. Okay, among the metal. Okay. Alright, that's what we learned. Okay. So please be careful. Huh? Okay, I want to repeat one more time, it's so important. Alkali metal is a metal, it do have some properties that metal have, such as this, a good conductor. But alkali metal also a weird metal. They also have some properties which is a bit uh, a difference or a, yeah, a big difference compared to normal metals. These are the three. Okay? Okay, what else we learned from last week? Last week I also tell you what happened when you go down the road. 
Okay, so yeah, it's number four. Last week we also learned moving down the group. Moving down the group means from top to bottom. You know that some of the properties actually changes. Okay. Alright. So I said, yeah. This is your lithium, this is your sodium, this is potassium. This is the electro arrangement 21, 281, and 2881. Huh? Going down the group from top to bottom, what is the change in physical properties? Focusing on treating it. First one, from top to bottom, the atom size or the size of atom increases. Size of atom increases. Okay? Going down the group, they become larger and larger. Lithium is small, sodium is larger, potassium is huge. Okay? Everyone know why, right? We learned this in group 18. Huh? If they ask you why the size of atom increases, because you have more and more shells. Huh? You have more and more shells occupied with electron. More and more circles fill up with electron. That's why it become larger, you see? Two circles, three circles, four circles. Understand? Alright. Second thing, going down the group, the density is in, uh, increases. Why? Uh? Why density increases? Density is mass over volume. We learn in PD3. Uh? Going down the group, the mass increases very fast. Faster than volume. So going down the group, the mass actually increases way faster than the volume. If the mass increase so fast, when mass increase, density also increase. Okay? This one is seldom asked, but it's good to know. The last thing, which is the most, most, most important thing, is the melting point. Going down the group, the melting point is decreases. Now this is a bit different than group 18. Huh? Group 18, go down the group, the melting point increase. But group 1 going down the group, the melting point decrease. Okay, they're a bit different. Okay? So why ah? Uh? Okay, guys, I told you two weeks ago, whenever you want to talk about melting and boiling point, your answer must include the force of attraction to be broken and the heat that you needed. Because remember, when you want to melt or boil something, you need to overcome the force of attraction. Okay? So the concept is very simple. If your solid is attracted by super super strong forces, you need to supply a lot of energy to break the forces, which result in super high melting point. Understand? Same thing. If your substance is attracted by super weak forces, you only need a little energy to break them. Okay? So in that case, when you need very little energy, your melting boiling point is going to be very low. Does it make sense? So imagine that. Don't memorize it, okay? just imagine what you do, okay? So, and then you have to be very careful. This is from last week. If you are not here last week, please be careful. Huh? Now, when you want to melt or boil something, you must talk about the force. Huh? Your answer must talk about the force of attraction as well as the heat that you needed. How much heat that you needed to overcome the force. So the force of attraction, you must talk about the name of the force as well as the strength of the force. And I want to make a final summary here just in case if you forgot, especially for those of you who are not here last week. Watch the video later to recap on the whole concept. For those who are here last week, do a summary together. So far in your entire SPM, up to now, chapter 4, when you want to melt or boil substance, there's only two forces to be overcome. See ya? Yeah? So there's only two forces of attraction you should overcome it. Okay? The first force of attraction is called metallic bond, which I taught you last week. The second force of attraction called Van der Waals forces. The name sounds like ice cream, right? Van der Waals forces, also called intermolecular forces. So when you want to melt or boil substance, there's only two forces. Metallic bond or intermolecular force. The most important thing is when to use. That's the problem. A lot of people under form 5, they still don't know when to use. You use metallic bond, the name tells you metallic bond. Understand? You use it when you want to melt or boil a metal. Understand? When you want to melt a metal, the force of attraction to be overcome is called metallic bond. So you use it for a metal. So if this is metal, then this partner should be non-metal. So today, if you want to melt 
okay, or boil a non-metal substance, the force of attraction to be overcome is when the water passes. Are you feeling that? Okay, so that's why you call, recall back. Make sense? The first loop I told you is group 18. If you remember, group 14 to 18 is non-metal. That's why, what is the force we are using? Van der Waal forces. Understand? Last week, I taught you melting and boiling point for a for group 1. Group 1 to 30 is metal. When you want to melt or boil a metal, that's why last week, if you remember what we are using, metallic bond. Understand? Don't use the wrong thing at wrong time, which a lot of people they do. Understand? Please, make sure you use the wrong <coughs> force at the right time. Huh? Okay, that's it. So for metallic bond, it's a bit special. I told you last week, Metallic bond, when they go up, they become bigger. Okay, as you're going down the group, huh? as you're going down the group, yeah, the size of atom become larger. It's true, atomic size increases. But at metallic bond, is very weird because you see, huh? this is a lithium which is small and cube. Okay? This is a lithium, very small and cube. They hold their hand together, we want to break down. When they grow down, become potassium. Potassium become large, but like what I told you, Group 1 is weird. Group 1 is weird. So, the behavior also very weird one. When they grow up, only the head become big, the body still super small. Understand? So, when you grow up, when the head is very big, the body very, very small, it will make you weaker. Understand? It will make you weaker. Because it only becomes stronger when what? When the whole thing is bigger. Head become big, body become big, head, head the arm become big, then only you are strong. But you see, group 1 is very special. Group 1 going down the group, only the head become bigger. The body doesn't. Okay? Which makes you very, very weak. Understand? Imagine a person with a super big head, the body is super small. You're going to be very weak. Understand? Alright, so going down the group, atomic size increases. So what is the force in between the hand? Huh? Metallic bond. So metallic <laughs> bond eventually become weaker. So when the metallic bond becomes weaker and weaker, so you need less and less heat. You need the heat for what? To overcome the force of attraction. You need less heat to overcome the force of attraction. So this is what we need to know. Okay? So far so good. Okay? We are still re re revised from last week because quite a number of you are not here last week. So I think better we revise. No rush guys. Really no rush. Keep on rushing, go fast, no point. You don't understand that? Huh? Okay now, let's finish it, the last one. Last week, I also touched a bit on this. Hey guys, can someone remind me? Did I talk about reactivity last week? I did that. Okay, good. Now, this is very important. I want to revise with you. Huh? Very important. Eyes on here. Reactivity of group 1. Huh? Okay. So, group 1 is very, very reactive. Okay. And guys, can we do a quick verbal revision together? Guys, I told you since group 18, uh, chemical substance wanted to react only for one purpose. They want to be stable. Understand? All chemical substance they react because they want to be stable. Okay? So if I'm already stable, I'm not keen to react. I am unreactive. In the other word, inert. Understand? If I am not yet stable and I wish to be stable, how I do that? I'll go to react with people. Clear? Okay? So guys, look at here. Group 1 is very reactive. Why? Put your eyes on here. Lithium has 2,1. Sodium is 2,8,1. Potassium is 2,8,8,1. As you all can see, all of them have one outer electron. So their outermost shell or valence are not fully occupied. Understand? Because if, if you want to be stable, your valence must be full, which they are not. Lah. So they are not yet stable and they want to be stable. So at when group one, they want to achieve stability, the simplest way they can do is they, they throw, they dump the electron, understand? When you have 281, you dump the one electron, you become 28, which is stable. When you are 281, you throw the one outer electron, you become 28, which is stable. Are you that? So I want all of you to understand. Group one, they have one outer electron. They are not yet stable. So in order to be stable, what they do? They donate the electron, huh? Yeah? So group one, they will donate one valence, or we call outer electron. Group one, donate one valence or outer electron to achieve stable electron arrangement. 
Okay, what is stable electrode arrangement? The outer shell fully occupied. Eh? So they will throw one electron in order to make the outer shell fully occupied, which is stable. Eh? Okay, so for group one, how to know how reactive you are? It depends on how easily for you to throw the electron. Okay, the more easily for us to donate, or you can write the word release, or you write the word lose. The more easily for you to donate, release, or lose one valence electron, okay, the more reactive they are. Okay, they are more reactive when they can throw the electron more easily. So let's do this, uh. let's use this thing. What happens when you're going down? Lithium is 2, 1. If I draw it up, it's this. 1 and 2. 2 and 1 here. Okay. So, when you come to sodium, sodium is 2, 8, 1. 2, 8, 1, you have 3 circles. Uh. Okay, listen carefully. So, you have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1. Uh. Lastly, you have a potassium. Potassium is 2, 8, 8, 1. We have four circles. 2, 8, 8, and 1. Okay? So this is 2. This is 8. This is 8. And this is 1. So all of them have one outer electron. All of them want to throw the electron. We want to see who is more reactive. We need to know who can throw the electron most easily. Okay? So guys, Remember, when you want to throw the electron away, when this electron wants to go out, so all the electrons are pulling by center. The center is called nucleus. So the nucleus is pulling the electron. The nucleus is pulling the electron. The nucleus is pulling the electron. Okay? So we want to know how easy to throw the electron. Very simple, guys. If you guys are having a problem, I say last week how to do it. Imagine the nucleus is the Earth, alright? Imagine the electron to be thrown is the moon. Understand? You want to take off the moon from the orbits. So, if you want to take the moon away from the orbits, you must overcome the, uh, what we call that, gravitational force, okay? There is a gravitational force to pull the electron. So you see, if you're, if, if let's say going down the group, what you saw, more and more shells, right? Two circles, three circles, four circles. When you have more and more shells, what is the impact or consequences? Electron become far away, right? Electron become far away. Try not, electron is this. Let's say I do some measurement. I assume, right? 3 cm, just assume. 6 cm, 14 cm, just assume. Just a number, okay? So when the electron become far and far away from center, the pulling force become weaker, right? Try not, when you are far away from me, I can't hold you strongly. So, the force of attraction becomes weaker and weaker. Watch out, what is the name of the force? Not Van der Waals, not metallic bond. Understand? Because Van der Waals and metallic bond only meant for melting and boiling point. I'm not asking about melting and boiling, understand? So what is the force? This is the force between nucleus and valence electron. Here? Okay. So when an electron becomes far away, the pulling force is weaker. When the pulling force is weaker, this electron should be able to go up more easily. The more easily to dump the electron, the more reactive you are. Clear? Okay, how to put all these puzzles in words? How to put in words? Huh? So, learn this huh? and we will continue from here. Okay, moving down the group. When we moving down the group, as you can see, alright, the valence electron now will become further away. Valence electron now is further away. Away from where? From the center. Center called nucleus. When the valence electron is further away from the center or the nucleus, the pulling force is weaker. The pulling force is called nucleus attraction. Huh? You can write force of attraction between nucleus. Force of attraction between nucleus and also the valence electron. The force of attraction between the nucleus and also the valence electron eventually become weaker. When you have a weaker pulling force, like this, imagine that uh, this pulling force is 10 newton, this pulling force is 4 newton, this pulling force is 1 newton. When the pulling force is weaker, this electron can get up easily. Okay? So it becomes much easier for you to donate electron. 
So when the electron can be dumped easily, okay, so what happens? Reactivity increases. So you become more and more reactive. So that's what I want you to know. Going down group one, you become more and more reactive. Are you okay with that? The reaction becomes more and more vigorous. More and more vigorous. I'll show you some video by next week. Okay? But today just get some idea first. We stop here, right? Okay, let's go on from here. Okay, guys. So I left a very small part to finish with you. Okay? I left another small part to finish with you. Then we will spend more and more time to do exercises. Huh? Okay, uh, give me about 20 minutes. I'll finish the theory in these 20 minutes. Then we will do exercises together for approximate an hour. Okay? We spend a lot of time to do exercises so that you know how to apply. Okay? Because a common mistake for people when they come to camp is really terrible application. Don't know how to apply. Come. So let's start. Eh? Okay. Let's continue from here. So today I'll teach you something called chemical properties. Chemical properties of group 1. What is chemical properties? Guys, chemical properties is all about reaction. Okay? I can burn in oxygen to produce a new substance. That is my chemical properties. Okay? I can react with acid to form water. That is a chemical properties. And that chemical property is all about reaction. Eh? Okay, guys. Group 1 got total 3 chemical reactions. Eh? Group 1, okay? You have 3 <coughs> main reactions. Okay, you have 3 chemical reactions that you should know. I will go one by one and please listen carefully. You have 3 chemical reactions. Please listen carefully. Eh? Okay, the first one, follow me. Please follow me. I will teach you a proper way how to learn this. Okay? Okay, many, many of the school will ask you to memorize the equation, which is damn hard. Why, ah? Uh, it's like I give, I give you some number first. Group 1, how many member guys start asking you to memorize? 3. Okay? Imagine, ah, uh, I got 3 chemical reactions. Every chemical reaction got 3 further. Understand? I need to memorize 9 equations, which is nonsense. Here, you don't need, you don't need to memorize 3. I teach you a way that today you only need to memorize, you don't even memorize. I teach you how to predict. You predict, you use three things, you can predict all the nine things. I show you how to do, follow me up. Okay, the first one, huh? reaction number one that we need to know is this. Follow me, guys. Okay, group one is alkali metal. When alkali metal throw into water, you are able to form alkali and also hydrogen. So this is what you need to know. Alkali metal put in the water, you form alkali. Guys, do not call alkali metal for fun, you know. Group 1, the nickname called alkali metal. Why they call alkali metal? They not call for fun. They call alkali metal because they can do some magic. They can change the water, become alkali. Understand? That's why they call alkali metal. It sounds funny, right? If I say, oh, uh, this is alkali metal. When you put in water, the water become acidic. What's that? Do not. Then I call acidic metal lah. What I call alkali metal. Am I right? I call alkali metal because I can make alkali lah. Understand? Okay, what is alkali in SPF? In SPF, what is alkali? Please look at Okay, if you recall back in your entire PT3, the most, most, most common alkali that you ever heard of uh, should be nothing than this. You got it? NaOH, which is called sodium. Hydroxide. Understand? This is one of the most famous alkali that you should heard in your PD3. <coughs> it's okay if you never heard about it. Okay, then? Now, guys, what is alkali in SPM? Uh? Let me write a side notes for you. Okay? So, in SPM, uh, in SPM, your alkali normally, okay, is hydroxide. What is hydroxide? Hydroxide means that they are something which actually ends with OH. Normally, they are something ended with OH. Example, NaOH. Example, KOH. Example, uh, CaOH. And so on and so on. Don't memorize, okay? Anything ended with OH in SPM, you can assume they are alkali. Here, anything ended with OH, you can assume they are alkali. So far, so good? And I'll tell you why later. So alkali is anything ended with OH. Look at what I do, huh? 
Anything and OH, anything I put XX and then OH. Understand? XX can be anything. Okay, yeah? good. Now, follow me. You have three alkali metal, right? Lithium, sodium, potassium. Let me teach you a tip. You go to choose among these three fuller. You choose a fuller that you yourself feel comfortable and familiar, and you use that fuller as your reference. Okay, what does it mean? Guys, lithium, sodium, and potassium. I don't think you will choose lithium. Get it? Because lithium doesn't sound that familiar. Am I right? Sodium and potassium, at least you heard about it. Am I right? My personal favorite, I love sodium. I love to use sodium. It depends on you. You can use potassium, no problem. Eh? I will use sodium to do prediction. Everyone, you see how I do what? Eh? I show you some magic what I do here. Okay. So, my tips is this. Eh? I will always go to... Oh, oh, I always go to use sodium to do prediction. What it means by use sodium to do prediction? Follow me, please. This is the sodium, which is the alkali metal. Eh? Okay. Sodium, which is alkali metal, react with water. Fantastic. I will get an alkali. So any alkali that got sodium one, NaOH. Am I right? Okay. The alkali got Na is NaOH. Hydrogen, I know, is a gas. Gas normally come in to H2. Understand? Then afterward, what you do here is that you do the balancing yourself. We do it together. One sodium on the left, one sodium on the right. Fantastic. Two hydrogen on the left, <coughs> one plus two hydrogen on the right. Three. Two and three. Guys, we learned in last chapter, <coughs> four, four, chapter three. When we have odd and even number, what to do? Put a two in front. Understand? Put a two in front here. We do it. Now, I got two sodium on the left. I put two sodium on the right. Now, my hydrogen is two on the left, but my hydrogen is one times two, two here, and this hydrogen also got two. So, I got four here. 2 to 4, a 2 kicks in. Am I right? My oxygen got 2 piece, but oxygen got 2 piece. Settle. Clear. Yeah. That's it. So once you write this equation, congratulations. Then you can use this thing to predict your friend. Who is my friend? Lithium and potassium. What you need to do is call copy paste. Okay. Here got 2, here is 2. Water, copy 2 water. Now here be smart. Just this is 2, this is 2. Just now when here is Na, here is Na. Now when here is Li, here become Li. Understand? L-I-O-H. Hydrogen, coffee. You get the idea? <laughs> Do the same thing for your potassium. The sodium is 2, potassium also 2. You have 2 water here, this is 2 water. This one is 2, this is 2. Just now when I use Na here, this is NaOH. Now when I use K here, this is KOH. You see that? In the end, hydrogen. Finish. Who asked you to memorize all three? No need. I use one and I predicted two of them. It's just a matter of copy, paste, and one more thing, modify. Here, copy, modify, and paste. Understand? Three things. So I get? Not very hard, right? Okay, now what you will see in the experiment, let me show you some picture, okay? Don't forget, don't forget, we learned just now, going down the group become more or less reactive, huh? More. Okay, guys, a lot of people say, Mr. Martin, I keep on listening about the word more reactive, huh? What it means by more reactive? The reaction happened faster and much more vigorous. How to show this reaction more vigorous? If you guys have the chance, please ask your school teacher to let you do this experiment. Okay, this is a very simple experiment. Okay, please ask them to let you do, which is super super interesting because when you do the experiment, you can see, you can imagine better. Here, guys, show, I show you three pictures. Huh? Now, this is a cup. This is a cup. This is a cup. We have three cups. Huh? These three beaker, we all put in water. Okay, we have water in all these three cups. This is water. This is water, and this is water. <coughs> Okay, you put in a piece of alkali metal. So here you put lithium. Okay, lithium is here. This is a piece of lithium. Here you put in a piece of sodium. Here you put in a piece of potassium. As you all can see, alkali metal should float on water. It doesn't sink, understand? Okay, what you will happen here? I will write the words in a short one, but I want you to imagine that. Huh? If you put lithium in a cup, you will see lithium will dissolve slowly. Then, dissolve. Okay, now when you put sodium, huh, you will see this. The sodium dissolves a bit faster and the sound is a bit louder. Faster. 
If you put potassium, it dissolves even faster and you will see some fire. They dissolve with fire, some purple color fire. You dissolve, that's it. Here, all right? So if you go to school, you do this experiment, it's much better, you can see that. Are you hearing that, all right? Because when I say, you have to imagine, okay? Now, how to write it? So just write this up. Okay, lithium will dissolve. Okay, keyword slowly. Okay, sodium is more reactive, ma. it dissolves quickly. Now, potassium even more reactive. Oh. How to do it? Uh? Potassium dissolves very quickly. So, can you see the difference? All dissolve, right? Slowly, quickly, very quickly. What are you trying to do? You try to impress the examiner that you understand the reaction getting more reactive. Understand? True not. Going down the road, become more and more reactive, man. That's why dissolve slow, faster, fastest. Understand? That's it. After all of them dissolve, you're getting the same thing, guys. No matter who you are, lithium, sodium, <coughs> potassium. All alkali metal dissolve in water. Of course, at different speed, lah. Some fast, some slow. But at the end of the day, they will produce alkali. So at the end of the day, you will produce some alkali. So what happened? You will produce a solution. So in the end, you will produce a solution. And this solution is obviously alkali. Guys, how you prove that is alkali? ED3, how you prove a solution is alkali? Litmus paper. Red or blue? Red. Okay. So you, you will produce a solution that will turn the litmus paper from red color to blue. That's it. Same thing here. This one will also produce a solution which will actually turn the litmus paper all the way to blue. This one is the same thing. You are still produce a solution that will actually turn the litmus paper from red to blue. That's it. Okay? So I want to repeat one more time before you jot down. Okay? So guys, what is happening here? That's the first thing. Huh? The first reaction for alkali metal is that alkali metal you dump in water, they will dissolve in the water. They will produce an alkaline and also some hydrogen. That's why apart from this, you also expect to see some bubble. You'll see some bubble also. What is the bubble? Hydrogen. Here, okay, you also will see bubble. This is more bubble because it's more reactive. This one got a lot of bubble. Okay? Alright? So, all the alkali metal can dissolve in water and they change the water become alkaline. That's why at the end of the day, the solution is alkaline. We must make first red blue, red blue, red blue. Understand? Okay. The only difference is what? They dissolve at different speed. Okay? Why are uh? different reactivity? Understand? The more reactive you are, you will dissolve very fast and vigorously. So far, so good. You see the thing? Fantastic. So now let's see. Oh. <coughs> Okay, so now we will try to go for the reaction number two. Uh. Let's learn the reaction number two now. Let me erase the thing. Okay, let's go for reaction number two. Follow me. Okay, reaction number two. Reaction number two. Okay, when we have an alkali metal, which is group one for love, go to react with oxygen. Now, I take the alkali metal and I go to burn it in oxygen, okay? I burn in oxygen, so I will form what? I will form a substance called metal oxide, okay? Guys, anything when you combine and merge with oxygen, you form, you, you call it oxide. Understand? Example is here, the big random one, huh? I have a magnesium, I merge with oxygen, I call this guy called magnesium oxide. Understand? I have an aluminium, I merge with oxygen, I call aluminium oxide. Understand? Sometimes there's something like this, for example, when carbon merge with two oxygen because of two, you call it carbon dioxide. So far, so good? Okay, whenever you have a substance merge with oxygen, the new filler you got is called oxides. Understand? Good. Alright, now, Alkali metal is a metal. When you merge with oxygen, you form metal oxide. So far, so good? 
follow me, you'll be fine. Metal oxide appear as a white color solid. <coughs> Metal oxide is white color. Sometimes they will ask you the color. So please be careful. Huh? The metal oxide, they will ask you the color. Example, they will ask you, what is the color for magnesium oxide? White. Understand? All the metal oxide should be white. There's some special case you will learn in your form form, chapter 8, but not for now. Okay, for now you can assume all the metal oxide is supposed to be white. Eh? Okay, now let's start. Eh? Okay, same thing. I have three alkali metal. I use sodium to start because I am very familiar with sodium. Okay, so same thing. Use the same tips again. We use sodium to start with our prediction. Sodium, which is the alkali metal. Good. We have the <coughs> oxygen. Oxygen is a gas. Oh, Okay, now your form 4 chapter 3 will be very handy, will be very helpful. You see, yeah? guys, listen up for me. Sodium will react with oxygen, you should form a guy called sodium oxide. So I know when sodium combined with oxygen, the name is sodium oxide. I don't want the name, lah. I want the formula, right? Form 4 chapter 3 teach us I can change the name to formula, right? Provided I know the, the charge. Everyone, do with me. If you remember, what is the charge for sodium? An A plus. What is the charge for oxide? O to minus. Can we do the prediction? Yes, right? This formula is positive. No number means one. Positive one and negative two. Charge different. What do you do? Cross. Understand? Charge different. Do the cross method, right? Charge the same. Cut off. Okay, now the one go to the right. The two come to the left. And A got two. And A two. Oxygen got one. Oh, I have successfully get a formula already. Clear. So can you see how important is your formula chapter 3? Clear. Because formula chapter 3 taught us whatever name of chemical they gave us, we can predict the formula by knowing the, the charge. Okay? Alright. So, something off topic. I hope you have known the list of ion by now. Okay? I hope all of you already know the list of ion. If you write AL4+, I will keep you one uh, here. Uh, so, please make sure you know all the charge. Huh? Okay, now. Guys, after I write this equation, is my job done already? No. When I write chemical equation, it must be always balanced. I got one sodium on the left, I got two sodium on the right. I will try to put two first. Just try it I got two oxygen on the left, I got one oxygen on the right. I suppose to put a two here. But when I put a 2 here, now the sodium becomes 2 times 2 becomes 4. When sodium becomes 4, the 2 is not good already. Erase the 2 and make it become 4 now. So far, so good. All of you should have a very good idea of balancing by now. Understand? Very good. I have my good friend sodium already. Let's use the, so let's use the sodium to predict another further called lithium. So for sodium, for lithium, la. oxygen, copy. So here 2, here 2. When I use Na, I got Na2O. When I use Li, Li2O. Here, same thing. I have potassium. 4 sodium, <coughs> this 4 potassium. La. Oxygen. When I use Na, Na2O. When I use K, K2O. The number 2 copy. So easy. Here, alright. Can you see? I don't need to memorize one. No, not. I don't need to memorize one. If I find a way, I predict myself. Guys, why I not advise you to memorize? Guys, don't get me wrong. Huh? Some people told me, they say, Mr. Martin, I'm freaking good at memorizing. Huh? Can I memorize? Why not? No problem. Huh? You are good at memorizing. Just memorize. I won't stop you. Okay? Why, why I don't really encourage you to memorize? Because for me, huh, I always have a philosophy, which is not necessarily correct. Okay? I, I always think, when you memorize, huh, it always comes with a risk. What if you forgot? Here, what if you forgot? If you forgot, you cannot do anything. Yeah? But what I'm doing here is that I don't memorize mark. I do prediction mark. Understand? In the other word, it sounds not so good. Like all these answers are boring. Right? Yeah? I boring all these answers and get it. Yeah? That's how I do. Okay, how does this experiment look like? Everyone follow me? Okay. Now, I want to burn the alkali metal in oxygen. Huh? So when you want to burn something, what happens is this. You put a gas jar. This is a gas jar for you to put a gas. This is a gas jar. In a gas jar, you have a spatula, or you have a spoon like this. Okay? If you don't know what is it, go to your spoon lab, take a look at it. Okay? So, on top here, you put a small, tiny piece of alkali metal. Okay? Let's say this alkali metal is lithium. You do the same thing for your potassium. Huh? You do the same thing for your potassium. Okay? So, this is a piece of potassium. 
The last one, you go to put in a piece of <coughs> potassium. So this will be a piece of potassium, sorry. Okay? Okay, now you have this three lock. So what you are doing, you want to burn them. Okay, you want to burn them and move everything. This, all these are gas jar, and this gas jar is with oxygen. Now all these things, you have gas jar. Your gas jar is filled up with oxygen. Okay, so you have oxygen gas in all the gas jar. And now you want to burn them. When you burn them, you can see they got, they got flame. They got flame up. Huh? All right, uh, one minute. Let's see whether I can try this. I didn't reject Okay, guys. Sorry, I did some time. Okay, why I do this? Because I want to show you a few things. Huh? When lithium burn, okay, all of them burn. Huh? So when they burn, they want flame. Huh? So this one will burn. This one will burn. This one will burn. Okay, so this one I write lithium first. So for lithium, lithium will burn. Okay. <coughs> slowly, okay. Lithium will burn slowly, and then you will get this thing. The flame color is red color, so you will see the fire. The flame is red. Okay. Sodium, which is a bit more reactive than lithium. Sodium, when you burn, you will burn brightly. Okay. More reactive, lah. This one you can write slowly or you can write another word dimly. Also can here. Yeah? You burn slowly or you burn dimly. You are not that reactive. Huh? This one burn a bit more brightly. When sodium burn, the flame color would be <coughs> yellow. Sorry, I don't have yellow. Okay, okay like, pretend it's yellow. Okay, this orange actually. Okay, it's yellow. Okay, you get yellow. I don't have yellow marker there. All right. So when you come for the potassium, when you come for potassium, huh? so potassium is much more reactive. So potassium will burn, you see, huh? dimly, brightly. Make something more extreme, what happened? Very brightly, understand? Very brightly. As long as you can show the difference will do, okay? Brightly, something even more extreme, very brightly, understand? So the flame color for potassium would be this purple. You can write purple or like. Okay, so you can see the flame is purplish. Are you with that? So the flame color is a bit different. Okay, lithium burn in red color flame, sodium burn in yellow color flame, and then potassium burn in purple color flame. Understand? And they burn differently, right? Dimly, brightly, very brightly. Understand? What does it tell you? You're getting more and more reactive. And what is the final product? No matter who you are, all alkali metal upon burning, you got metal oxide. Your metal oxide, all of them, will appear as white color solid. Understand? So at the end of the day, all of them will produce white solid. So in the end, you will produce white solid. White solid is produced. White solid is produced. <coughs> and white solid is produced. And that's it. Okay? No copy first. I'll give you some time to do so in the shop. Huh? Okay. That's what we need to know. So far so good? Okay? So we are learning the second reaction. When I take an alkali metal, I go to burn it in the oxygen. The alkali metal will become metal oxide, which appears as a white color solid. Understand? Okay, so imagine, uh, just imagine. Everyone, today I have a piece of alkali metal. Everyone recall back, do you still remember what is the appearance of alkali metal? What is the color you remember alkali metal? Gray, gray, huh? Alkali metal is a shiny gray solid. So let's say this is a sodium, it is a gray color solid in the beginning. After you burn the sodium, you are getting some white color solid. That white color solid is sodium oxide. Understand, huh? Metal oxide is supposed to be white. Okay, before you copy, let me go a little bit more. Give you some time. Give me some time. Go a bit more than only you drop that one shot, huh? Okay, now, after you get the white color solid, the white color solid, if you put in water, magic will happen again. Okay? So the white color solid, huh? okay? So now, if 
we go to put or we go to insert the metal oxide. If we insert the metal oxide in the water, the magic will happen. Okay, we okay, it will it will produce alkali again because this is not the first time you do clear. Yeah? So which means what? Why I call go on alkali metal? I can produce alkali so easily. How easy is it? Take a piece of sodium, pure sodium, throw in water, water become alkali. Take a piece of sodium, go to burn already. Even after burning, you become sodium oxide, throw in water, still become alkali. Here, you can, you can produce alkali so easily, no matter you burn or not burn. That's why we call it as alkali metal. Understand? You make alkali easily. So what do you do? How to do this? Follow me. Okay. So if you take a metal oxide, you add on with a water, you are producing your alkali again. Guys, recall back who is alkali? Alkali is all the thing ended with OH. Okay? Everything ended with OH, the hydroxide thingy. It's called alkali. Yeah? Okay, same thing. Don't memorize, but we use our best friend to do prediction, which is sodium. So now I have sodium oxide. Yeah? Sodium oxide, what is the formula? Coming from here, Na2O. Huh? Na2O is sodium oxide. Sodium oxide added with water, I will get an alkali. Alkali is anything of OH. When I got Na here, my alkali should be NaOH. Am I right? Balance the equation. Two sodium over the left, one sodium over the right, two cocaine. One and one, two oxygen on the left, oxygen times two on the right, very good. Hydrogen two on the left, hydrogen one times two, two. Everything is balanced here. Then we copy, paste, and modify. Okay? Lithium, Li2O plus H2O. Here is two, here is two. Na, Na, Li, Li. Understand? So K2O plus H2O. Okay? Na, Na, K, K. K-O-H Finish Okay? That's what happened Alright? My last words before I let you jot down Alkali metal make alkali very easily Okay? No matter the metal itself or the metal oxide Okay? You take a pure alkali metal The metal itself put in water You make alkali and hydrogen gas If you take the alkali metal Go to burn already become a metal oxide, you still can produce alkali when you put in water. Understand? You can make alkali so easily. That's why I call you alkali metal. Drop down on this, we left one more last thing to go. Okay? Oxygen or no matter they burn in chlorine, you get white. Understand? 
You need to know this two color, that's all. Now, follow me, huh? Okay, now, same thing. What you do? You use the best friend to predict sodium, huh? Okay, I start with sodium to make prediction. So, I have an alkali metal sodium here at night. Chlorine gas. What is the formula for chlorine gas? Cl? So most of the gas come in couple, right? Okay, I will get a metal chloride. I don't think very hard, right? Metal chloride. Sodium combined with chlorine, the final product called sodium chloride. We should be very familiar with sodium chloride, right? The salt we are eating. I not even need to predict, isn't it? Na Cl. Am I right? Or not. But of course, if I want, can uh, Na plus Cl minus. Or not. Okay? Now, balance the equation. One sodium on the left, one sodium on the right. Two chlorine on the left, one, cl uh, one chloride on the right. Put a two to make the chlorine become two. When you put a two, the sodium also become two. We should need to put a two here. Understand? And I believe you know what to do. Copy paste. <coughs> two lithium plus chlorine. Okay? Become two. Na change with the Li. So here become Li. LiCl. Lithium chloride. Potassium here is a two. This is a chlorine. Na is Na. K is K. KCl. It's a two here. And that's how we do. So I don't think very hard, right? Okay? The good thing is what? This experiment is 99% same. Where is the 1%? This oxygen change to chlorine. Understand? This oxygen change to chlorine gas. The rest is the same. Okay? Still red, still yellow, still purple. Understand? The rest is the same. Why, guys? You're still burning what? You still burning. You cannot be biased and say, oh, but burn in oxygen one color, burn in chlorine another color. No, the color is the same because you are still burning. And the final product, the chloride still white color solid. Understand? 100% the same. Finish. Okay? So now, I will do the final summary with you all before we close up with the group one. Huh? Then we do some exercise later on. Now, so this is the final summary. This is the final summary. Okay, before we go on with the exercises. Okay, so this is my final summary. Okay, what is the chemical reaction or chemical properties of group one? Okay, so group one is alkali metal. They can do this, number one. When alkali metal, all the way go to put in the water, they dissolve in the water and they make an alkali. And also hydrogen. Who is alkali? Anything who got OH is alkali. Yeah? Alright? Second thing, if I have alkali metal, I go to burn the alkali metal in oxygen gases. Oxygen gas. So the when metal combined with oxygen, the final product called metal oxide. Metal oxide appear as a white color solid. Okay. I can go on from here. If I take the white solid, which is the metal oxide, the metal oxide, I throw in water, it can still make the water become alkali. Okay? The only difference is that you don't have hydrogen now. Understand? You don't have hydrogen. Okay, after burn, no hydrogen already. Yeah? Last one. If you have an alkali metal, and you go to put in a chlorine gas and burn. If you burn in a chlorine gas, so the metal combined with chlorine will form something called chloride. Metal chloride. Metal chloride still appear as a white color solid. That's all. That's what we need to know. And last thing to close up with everything here, guys. Group one is super duper reactive, right? Or not? Very reactive. Why? Huh? Group one got one outer electron. Throw one electron is very easy. Here, okay? Group one to one valence electron. If they want to react, they just need to throw one electron away. And throwing one electron is quite easy to do. Here, so group one is so reactive, okay? So group one is super reactive. That's why we must handle them carefully. We must handle with care. We must be very careful. So this is called safety precaution. You all must know some safety precaution when you deal with group one. Okay, group one super reactive. You must be very careful when you handle it. Okay, listen carefully. Yeah? There are about four safety precautions. And again, don't memorize. Let's think, let's imagine, let's do some common sense. Huh? Number one, if I want to do some storage, 
Today, if I have alkali metal, I want to keep the alkali metal where I can keep it. I cannot keep in normal situation. For example, huh? imagine everyone, this is an alkali metal. You cannot simply take a container and put the alkali metal in the container. You cannot. Why? Because if you simply keep in container, the alkali metal will expose to air. In the air, you have some oxygen. Alkali metal can react with oxygen, true or not? And in the air, you have some water vapor. You have some water moisture, understand? So, alkali metal can react with the water in the air, understand? Very bad. You don't want the alkali metal to react, right? Not good, okay? So how are you going to prevent the alkali metal from reacting? When you want to store, huh? you go to store or you go to keep your alkali metal in a very special place called P-A-R-A-F-F-I-N Paraffin oil Paraffin oil is a very special type of oil for you to store, store the chemical Understand? Why you use paraffin oil? I bring you to back to a concept that you learned in UPSR. UPSR, you saw this thing before, you see ah? This is a test tube. Inside have a piece of iron nail. They want to talk about rusting. You all know rusting occur when the metal in contact with oxygen and water. So when you put some oil, you know water can't go in, you know oxygen cannot go in. Am I right? So your iron nail doesn't rust. Are you that? It's the same thing here. It's the same thing here, only the iron nail become alkali metal. Understand? So you don't want the oxygen to go in because oxygen reacts with alkali metal. You don't want the water to go in because alkali metal reacts with water. You get the picture? Take the inspiration and the concept from the rusting. Okay? Second thing. If today I want to take the alkali metal, today uh, if I have alkali metal, I want to take it out. Okay? So what should you do? Okay? Do not ever try to touch the alkali metal by your naked or bare hand. Naked hand. So don't use the hand to touch. Huh? Why? Because guys, sometimes even without realize, huh, you might sweat. So there are some water moisture on your hand. Okay? Your hand always has a little moisture, else your hand will be very dry. Understand? You always have some moisture. Alkali metal just need very little water, they can read already. Understand? Imagine today this is alkali metal, okay? It fall down on the floor. You, I, I use my hand to take it. Once I take it, you will see like magic. You will see some fire on my hand. Understand? <laughs> they react on my hand. Why? My hand got water. Understand? You don't want that, right? You don't want that, right? Okay? So that's the thing. You don't use your hand to touch because your hand got some water or moisture. Okay? Third one. So guys, so what you should do to protect yourself? Put the glove. You put on a glove, okay? You put on a glove. Guys, even you put on the glove already, again, after you put the glove, some people thought, okay, now I have a glove, I am well protected, I can be a hero, I put a touch. Again, your glove might be wet. Understand? The glove still can be, still might be wet. So even you put on a glove already, you still don't touch using the hand. Although the hand is protected or covered with the glove, understand? So if you really, really want to take it, you use this. Okay? If you want to take the alkali metal up, you learned this thing before? Forceps? Who don't know forceps here? Forceps is something like this. The clip, the small clip in your lap. Understand? So you put a glove, you use the forcep to clamp the whole thing. Understand? They're very, very reactive. Last one. When you deal with alkali metal, don't be greedy. Use a small piece to do. It is super duper reactive, okay? Just use a small quantity. <laughs> don't try to use a big amount because they're so reactive. See, ah? If let's say you are being greedy, this is a beaker. Alkali metal by right, you should use a small piece like this. <coughs> if let's say you are very greedy, you put this thing, <laughs> alright? What happened? It will react in a way that so reactive and the whole beaker will burst. Okay? The whole beaker will burst. 
Understand? Too reactive. You get a picture? Okay? Don't do that. Use a small piece will do because our cutting method is so reactive. So please don't use a big amount. Understand? Small amount will do the job. Okay, here we are. Group 1, all that. I feel that? Not very hard, right? If you learn in a proper way, it's supposed to be easy. Okay? So this is what you need to know. Okay? You jot down and we proceed with exercise. That's all. Okay?